Yo, what up, everybody? It's your boy BQ with the Impact Lounge, and this is the Moving the Needle podcast, which I do every blue moon when I kind of want to talk about some of the moves Impact is making, um, usually from a marketing standpoint or, or the way they're, you know, they might be promoting something. You know, I like to to get on here every once in a while and talk like that, talk about it to you guys. Usually, I really love my Moving the Needle intro, but it's on my other computer, and I spend like two hours trying to fire that that piece of shit up um so now i, I got to do brand new intros for my podcast and stuff and i've been really like slacking on it i usually just use the general general channel intro and i really got to step that up but um this is the moving the needle and this is the impact lounge it's the number one place to be for the impact wrestling fan so hit that subscribe button here on youtube if it's your first time here so um today's topic we're going to talk trinity uh, either Trinity Fatu, Trinity Star. That's what she's, um, I guess, copywriting right now. So we don't know what her name's going to be exactly. And uh, people are pretty excited because we're going to start seeing her, at least for a little while, in Impact Wrestling. We know that it's not a short-term deal. It was um, announced yesterday, I believe, that uh, that we're going to see her at the Chicago Chicago set of tapings. So from a social media standpoint. They tweeted out that they had a major surprise coming. And we're in the era of major announcements and surprises and all that shit. We're in, we're in that era. So Impact's, Impact's getting on that on that train just like uh, Tony Khan and them do and, and Triple H and all that. So major surprise. And that's the kind of things we want to see from time to time on social media. It can't become a crutch like with, with Tony Khan, but... You want to see those things on social media from time to time because they create chatter and it gets people talking. What's it going to be? Who is it going to be? And, you know, whether it's, you know, people talking over text, talking on Facebook, talking in Twitter groups, uh, talking in the Twitter, Twitter fear, just out in their Twitter feed, um, other social media platforms. You know, that's what you want to do to keep people talking. And that's something that I've typically been pretty critical on is, is, you know, telling impact, create your own news or create a, a creative way to deliver news so that people talk about it. Like you can, you can deliver the same exact news, but you can do it in different ways where chatter is created. Like if they were just to, you know, if they did not pre-announce that there was a surprise and it, it was leaked. Yeah. People would still talk, but in the days leading up to it, you know, impact was trending on Twitter and, um, you know, social media numbers are up. That's the kind of things we want to see. So it comes out, PW Insider reports, that it is um, Trinity Fatu, and that's expected to be what the surprise is. Now, what I saw on all the social media platforms and the groups that I'm a part of is a lot of, oh, PWI ruined this for impact. They didn't ruin anything. I can assure you this was leaked by impact wrestling to pwi this is so i gave my my thoughts on the potential surprise on the patreon at patreon.com backslash bq speaks um but i'm but i'm going to kind of summarize what i had said on there and when they said that there was a major surprise the graphic was spring slug fest okay now when Impact puts out these graphics and these have these cute little names of, you know, Battle at the Bayou and all this, all this shit. That is strictly done for the potential ticket buyers. That is their marketing plan. Um, you know, the graphics are completely different. They got their own names for the set of tapings. It is strictly for the potential ticket buyer or someone that can be in attendance at the show. And uh, why I say that is is because when the episode rolls around, there's no mention of Spring Slugfest, Battle to Bayou. There's no mention of that anymore. It's back to the tired red graphics that they've been using for four years. It's the, the episode looks exactly the same as it did at any other location. It's we own the night. It's it's the same. Okay, so that is their marketing strategy for ticket sales. So when that came out. Spring Slug Slugfest. 
Well, the fact that they, first of all, that they said a surprise told me it was a person. And, you know, because some people are like, oh, maybe it's a TV deal. Maybe it's, maybe they're going to Delaware. No, that would be an announcement. But a surprise tells me it's a person or it's a, it's a product, something they're releasing. Um, so with all that being said, this announcement was geared towards let's get people to buy tickets and, and, and show up. When they had, when it's, when it's in conjunction with Spring Slugfest, it was not for the TV impact audience. Ultimately, yes, but it wasn't about, okay, we're going to, um, there's going to be a surprise on the TV show. They rarely do, because it's a taped show, they rarely do surprises on TV. And I think that's what some people took it as. Oh, it's it's going to go unspoiled until it airs on TV. No, this was, how can we continue to get more butts and seats and get people talking, make people think that they want to be there in Chicago? So, on the Patreon as well, I said, at an absolute minimum, because they have a they have a tendency to to have these fart in church announcements. I said at an absolute minimum it needed to be who I refer to as Trinity Star. I don't know if that's going to be her name or not, but that's what I refer to as. You may or know know her as Naomi from WWE. But I said at an absolute minimum, it cannot be a wrestler of less status than that. And it has to be someone coming from WWE. That's the only way you can justify saying we've got a major surprise. Um, well, I pulled I pulled my wrong notes up here real quick. So Impact leaked this. This was not, you know, PWI spoiling it. When I went to WrestleCon years ago, years and years ago in New Orleans, and they did a press conference. It was Austin Aries and Alberto El Patron. That was the one Patron didn't show up to. So Austin Aries did it by himself. But I uh, attended the press conference and there was 15 people in the fucking crowd. You know, I mean, it, it was not, this was not, there was a lot of chairs set up, but not a lot of people showed up to this thing. The only actual journalist in the room was Mike Johnson, EWI. To me, Mike Johnson is a fucking troll. He has, uh, back when the Impact Lounge was the number one place to be for news, reviews, interviews, and more, and I had a lot of inside knowledge. Uh, I wouldn't say I was breaking information, but breaking news, but I was putting news out there that people weren't uh, aware of at the time. And then it would show up on PWI with no credit whatsoever. You know, so Mike Johnson, not my favorite person in the world. Um, he's a little troll, but he's he's an impact dude. He, he's he's clearly um, clearly runs a platform that supports impact. And that's that's the that's the site that impact would want to break this. They don't want Son, Sean Ross Sapp doing it. Or some shit like that. You want PWI. So uh, I'm, I'm not saying that with firsthand knowledge of it. But I'm fairly certain that Impact um, leaked this to them. Will this move the needle? <laughs> no. Because nothing nothing moves the needle. But we still call this moving the needle podcast. Because we want to get to that point. right? We want to get to that point of you know, what they're doing. Increases interest and grows the fan base. And grows the television audience. That's what we want to ultimately see. Ultimately, see, obviously, will she, being a part of this, move the needle for impact? No, because she unfortunately is already at that level of laughing emojis when there's news about her, and in for that, you know, Mercedes Monet as well. But the WWE fan base is not a forgiving fan base. I should rephrase that. They're forgiving if she were to return. They'll act like she never left. But in the interim, there that is not a fan base who appreciates when someone stands up to the man. You know, I don't know that any any wrestling fan base is like that, but the WWE fan base will write you off. They're not Cody was the only one to really step away and be like, hey, I'm gonna go do my own thing and bet on myself. And people got behind it. She's not in that category. And I think she was kind of going along for the ride with Mercedes Monet, and and Mercedes was getting the buzz and the bookings, and it was cute for a little bit, the two of them together. But then she just didn't even appear on anything. They were on Bar Rescue. Uh, I think Mercedes maybe said two words, and Trinity said zero. <laughs> so um, 
it was kind of false advertising because on that show they'll hire someone to come in and and um undercover you know enter a bar and and ask for a certain drink certain meal and see how it's how it's served how it tastes see what the service is like and they were the ones who were promoted but they didn't really they had someone else go, I think it was Mar- Maria Menudos or whatever her name is and she did all the talking and she completely hogged the episode up but I don't think she's been the star she was expecting to be on the free agency side of things impact is a good place for her to 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 remain relevant and to you know to stay in the public eye would AEW be a good home for her no because the the pattern with former WWE women going to AEW is they go there, big reception, big pop. They come out as a baby face, and they have to turn him heel almost immediately. So the 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 track record of the WWE female going there for the most part hasn't really worked. They're they're almost almost all of them are heels. They've been they've been you know whether it's Tony Storm, Soraya, um, Ruby Soho, I, th- I think even Athena and Ring of Honor has had to go heel. So they 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 all turn heel. All right. So it's probably not a good place for her to go. You know, because what happens is they go in there as a baby face and they're forced to turn heel and kind of switch their gimmick up. She needs to go somewhere that's going to commit to her as a baby face, and she can commit to her gimmick, whatever it is that she wants it to be. But I, I I feel like the opportunities may or may not have been out there for her. Probably not. So Impact came calling. And it's a good good place for her. Then, you know, she's gonna get uh she's gonna get matches in the knockouts division. They're gonna be good matches. She, she's gonna have real opportunity. Now, what is Impact gonna do with her? Impact on paper is a gl- great place to come and reinvent yourself and to try some new things and see what works. It's a great place to come and throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. Examples of this, Steve Macklin, EC3, um, W. Morrissey, uh, Mia Yim when she came back for that that brief bit. Brian Myers to an extent, sometimes, sometimes not. But then on the flip side of it, they got Heath, Rhino, uh, to Neil Dashwood, before she started doing the influence thing, she was her WWE character. Heath, and, you know, Rhino's a one-trick pony. Heath, who had an opportunity to do something different, is just a version of his WWE character. Dirty Dango, RVD, uh, Matt Cardona showed up, and in, the Impact fan base was like, okay, we're going to see this GCW, NWA, Matt Cardona, and and it seemed like... Impact wanted him to be more Zack Ryder than Matt Cardona. So even though it's a great place to come and reinvent yourself, it seems like more often than not, they're like, we want you to be what you were before. We want to try to capitalize off your name and the gimmick. So is she going to show up and be doing, you know, a version of the Funkadactyl glow shit? Who knows? We probably need her to do the glow stuff so it can actually light up that dark ass arena. So um so we'll we're going to see she's going to be wrestling for the knockouts title almost immediately. We know that because that's what Impact does. She very well could be challenging for the belt at Slammiversary. Also there's a tag team match coming up tonight as I record this. I think it's tonight. And I actually no the match is not tonight. It is upcoming in a set of tapings where it's Deanna and Jordan versus the Coven. I would not be surprised if the Coven lose the, lose the title put it on these two. And the, I think the possibility is out, out there is for her to potentially team up with Mercedes if they can get her an impact for whatever reason. Because Deanna and Grace versus them could be could be a big money match for impact. But once you start bringing in girls like this, you're going to start seeing, you know, wrestlers like the Coven lose lose titles. They're, they, they're the homegrown teams and all that. They're, those are not going to be champions. <laughs> for long once you see these bigger names come in. So, you know, are they going to swing for the fences with her and try to do something different? It seems like she's there. It's, it's not a one-off. I would highly doubt she signed long-term. It, it's probably the, those contracts we've been come accustomed to 
or they're here for six months, or maybe they come for three, leave, come back. Um, but she has publicly said she would like to go back to WWE. So I, I wouldn't get too excited about like she's a long, long-term piece. Will she hold a knockouts title? It's very, very freaking likely. Will she wrestle for the knockouts title at a pay-per-view? Absolutely. Like that is going to happen. You can just, you can just put that in stone right now. Um, so, you know, we might get stuff, you know, I talk about moving the needle. We might get some new eyeballs because this is still a bigger name. It's someone who's um, been out of the public eye for a little bit. And people out of curiosity are going to want to see what she's about and what she's doing, you know, and, and it did, it did generate some buzz. In fact, lacks buzz more often than not, but this did generate some buzz. What kind of matches is she going to have? Well, the opportunities are going to be there. I've always found her to be a little reckless in the ring, personally. I don't think she's she's great. She's athletic, but I don't. From me watching WWE, I never saw her like hone those skills and control her athleticism. I always thought she was she was a little reckless. But you know, what do I know? Because I haven't seen her wrestle in a while. But we're going to see what happens when she mixes up with Jordan and Deanna and some of these girls. She's good. She's going to run through these knockouts. That's going to be one of the problems. She's going to be here short term. She's going to run through the girls who are signed to the roster. And then we're going to have to try to rehabilitate them. You know, I can see her beating Masha or something like that. But I am I am interested to see uh, what she does. She's, she's very different than anyone they have on the roster right now. I can see her doing some good stuff with if, if, um, the hell's her name? Tasha Steeles was still a heel. I could see some things going on there. But it seems like Tasha's kind of going the babyface route right now. But if she was a heel, I could see a really good um, program right there. But, you know, that's the last thing. I, I mean, that's the last thing I'm going to say about it. Is she going to be her own character? Or is she going to be, you know, what we see in WWE? Are they going to be like, hey, we want that? Or are they going to come here and let her take the shackles off and really, really do her thing? You know, um, Inspiration was another example. Kind of was doing the WWE thing. Took the took the, took, the, took the shackles off him a little bit, but we'll see. So give your thoughts in the comments, folks, about Trinity being an impact wrestling. I'm your boy BQ. We're moving the needle on a mile piece.